Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about test analysis and design and continuing with our next segment that is 4.2 black box test techniques and in this category we'll be understanding a lot of techniques related to black box testing. To get started today we are talking about equivalence partitioning. As we all learned in our previous segment that all the techniques are capable of deriving minimum test cases to test a particular scenario and the basis is of course the detailed requirements. If in case your project does not support detailed requirements then sometimes these black box test techniques may not be applicable at all. So you may have to go and switch to experience based test techniques which would save your day. However, today we are talking about equivalence partition, which is one of the techniques from the black box test category. And we will try to understand how this technique can be applied in reality. At the same time, what are the characteristics and tips and tricks to deal with the sample questions related to this particular technique. To get started, number one and most important thing is let's have a look on the definition of equivalence partition and what exactly this technique is all about. So as per the equivalence partition definition, it says, EP, which is in short of equivalence partition, it divides inputs into ranges, which are also known as partition or classes, where all the elements of a particular range are expected to behave same. Now, certainly this statement may not make a sense right as you read it, but if you deep dive, all we are trying to say that when there are a group of elements which behave together or similar, we put them together into one partition. In simple instances, if I say a leaf can be approved by manager and above, now I can create state forward two partitions here. That means below manager and everyone else below that, like engineer, senior engineer, technical lead, senior technical lead and all that in one group who cannot approve the leaf and manager and above till VP, CEO and whatever, I'll put it into one category. So I just created two partitions and I need one test from each. And that's what the second statement is trying to say that as per EP, we take test, just one test case from each range. And that's how you minimize it. Taking a quick example that if I'm talking about approving a leave, I don't have to test with every single role and designation in the organization. Rather, I have to just put them into two different partitions. One, all those people who cannot approve the leave. And second, all those people who can approve the leave and then take anyone randomly from this group because all the elements of each group will behave the same, right? And as the answer is same, that means if a manager approves it, that should work. If a senior manager approves it, it should work. So I can just take anyone. However, there is a drawback related to this technique because maybe the configuration and settings may not be exactly the same for all the roles and designation for manager and above, right? So at some point, most of you may feel that it's not necessary that if I just test one, it would work precisely for all of them, right? So that is one of the drawback which we have in the uh, equivalence partition technique. And that certainly creates a little bit of confusion in mindset of many people that how is that even giving you the confidence and required coverage? But again, I'm not here to comment something on that. All I'm here to tell you is what is the technique, right? So that's the technique all about. All we do is divide them into equivalence partitions and that's what the name of the technique is and however the synonym the techniques uh, sorry the partitions are also called as ranges or classes so please be aware of that as the examination may use these words too and then we take just one test from each partition now creating partition is the most important thing it depends on the subject of the uh, question what you will be asked and they will also be providing many other information which will let you understand that what is a valid partition and what is an invalid partition right so let's quickly take some good good examples of what we have seen in past from different subjects to see how exactly to apply this technique and get to the right answer so taking the very first example on your screen right now the subject says that an integer field shall contain values between and including 1 to 15. That means all we are talking about something called as integers. And many people, what they think integer is always about 1 to infinity. But let me tell you, again, most of you will agree to this. Given that your mathematics are strong, you would say, yeah, number line system certainly brings all understanding that the integers are between minus infinity 
to plus infinity, including zero, right? So you should build up that understanding as soon as you see a subject in the question that what are they talking about? So all they are saying again here is that an integer field should contain values between and including 1 to 15. Can you look at the preciseness of this that they are telling you very clearly that what should be included? And then by applying equivalence partition, what is the minimum number of test cases required for maximum coverage? In order to solve this question, we just plotted this particular table. So all you have to do is a rough work to create this table quickly and put the partitions precisely. Now, if you see the very first range, what we have is less than one. Now, operators are pretty important when it comes to creating partitions, because if you go wrong with your operators, that is less than and less than or equal to are two different things. If I say less than one, that means zero and below. If I say less than or equal to one, it is one, zero and below, right? So that's where people generally go wrong and pick up the wrong answers. So the first range will be less than one, then I have one to 15, and then 16 and above. That means it is inclusive of 16 into third partition. Quite often people do ask me that, uh, why didn't I just club uh, the less than one and 16 into what category? Okay, when you talk about sequential things, right? Managers are designations, engineers are designations, so I can put them into two partitions. But why did I create three? Because these are in sequence and I cannot just merge less than one and 16 together, right? So you should create three partitions in such cases. So when things are sequential, you go with three partitions, keeping one as valid, that is one to 15, left side invalid and right side invalid. So we just need three ranges. And as far as you get the right ranges with you, the answer is very straightforward that you would need just three test cases. So taking one from each of these partitions will give you the right answer. And the right answer here is B, that is you would need three test cases minimum by applying EP to test this particular scenario. Okay, so I hope that totally makes sense. If not, let's try looking at the same example with different context on the same topic. And that question is right on your screen. So the question here is exactly the same, but the ask is slightly different. And with this, I want to also remind you that they may not be just always straightforward question of asking you what is the minimum number of test cases. So here, the question is exactly the same. That is the scenario. An integer field shall contain values between and including one to 15. But this time by applying EP, which of the following is a valid collection of equivalence classes for the given scenario? Now, please be careful. When I say valid equivalence class, it means one to 15. If I say valid collection of equivalence classes, it means what set of ranges will you create? Many people do get confused even at this point, thinking that valid collection isn't it only the valid ranges, no. Valid collection of ranges means what ranges will you create to test the scenario? And when you say valid equivalence class or valid equivalence range, then it is only one to 50. The word collection means the set of ranges, what you need. If you don't have the collection, it's only the valid. Okay. If you didn't hear, please rewind and please listen to this. You'll get the point. So in this consent, again, we will be creating the same set of table that is less than one is invalid, one to 15 is valid and 16 and greater than that is one range. But here we don't need, you know, minimum number of test cases. So the options will also help you drive. Sometimes people get confused with reading the question and that becomes a little tricky too. So right here, we have four options. So check it out. Option A says less than one, one through 15 and more than 15. Okay, looks absolutely fine because less than one is what our left range is, one to 15, and more than 15 is 16 or greater, right? Option B says negative numbers, one through 15 and above 15. Now, many people even get confused at this point of time. You may have got the right answer, however, but let me tell you, many people do pick option B when I've taken a lot of sessions. Why? Because they think less than one is negative number. But what about zero? Zero is also an integer, right? So a bit of mathematics should be brought back when you're trying to solve these questions. Do not just solve them logically or professionally. Solve them even mathematically. Okay, so B is incorrect. Same way if I look at C, less than one, one through 14. No, they said very clearly in the question that it is inclusive of one and 15. So 14 is not the right answer. And D also has the same thing that is less than zero, which is wrong. One through 15, 15 and more than three, which is totally incorrect set of values. So in that context, the right answer here is A. It has less than one, one through 15 and 16 or greater. 
Okay, so you should get the idea of what exactly we need to do in order to solve an equivalence partition uh, technique based question. All right, continuing ahead, of course, we are looking at the next question and next question will be a little tricky, taking a complex one to make sure that not only basic or simple questions are discussed here, we will take an extreme advanced level question so that you are well prepared for equivalence partition. So let's have a quick look here. The question is reading out as that in a system designed to work out the tax to be paid. So again, subject and context can be anything. You don't have to start thinking financially or say that, hey, I'm not a financial person. How should I solve it? Ignore all that. This is just a subject. You should concentrate on the data. So the data reads here as an employee has 4,000 of salary tax free. Okay. Now up to 4,000, there is no tax. Of course, you know, salary cannot be negative. Also to highlight some key important thing that there are few uh, subjects which do not have negative at all. So you don't have to think about it, right? For example, age cannot be negative. Experience cannot be negative. Uh, your salary cannot be negative. So these are some of the key subjects where you don't have negative at all because people are born with positive values. Experience are gained when you start working. So there's no negative about it. So same way here, the minimum value for the salary could be zero, okay? No negative should be considered. So up to 4,000, you don't have to pay any tax. So up to 4,000, the salary is tax-free. The next is 1,500. Next 1,500 is taxed at 10%. Now let me tell you very clearly, many people go wrong right here, thinking that next 1,500 and they take inside 4,000. No, next 1,500 certainly means on top of 4,000 because up to 4,000, you have got a slab already. You got a slab already, right? So 4,000, zero to 4,000 is one range. Sorry, not even zero, one. A salary is something when you earn. So one to 4,000 is your one range. And next 1,500 means you have to add to the 4,000. So my next range will be 4,001 to 5,500. So I'm adding 1,500 to 4,000 and then getting my next range. So 4,001 to 4,000, oh, sorry, 5,500. And similarly, if I continue further, it says, the next 28,000 is taxed at 22%. Now that third slab. Now what is the third slab? 5,501 to 33,500. If you add 28 to 5,500, you will get the same value. And the last one is any further amount is taxed at 40%. That means anything beyond that. So this is 33,501 and greater than. Okay, so that totally puts together that that's the fourth slab and it will be taxed at 40%. Now, that's how you create your table. If you go wrong in creating a table, trust me, you will also have a wrong answer very well listed in the option because ISTQB very well knows where exactly you go wrong. All right, so let's quickly have a look on what the ask is. The ask says, which of these group of numbers would fall into the same equivalence class? So all you have to do is create this table first of all and uh, then look at what are the ranges. If your ranges are correct, pick the options put it on the table and see which of the option will fall into the same class. That means you have to all find that option is which will fall into a particular class. So if I just start picking up each option one by one, option A says 4,800, which is in second class, 14,000 is in third class and that's it. The story is over, it's distributed. We want something which falls into the same class. B, 5,200 falls into second class, 5,500 falls into second class, 28,000 falls into the third class. So, gone. Option C, 28,001 falls into the third class. 32,000, third class. 35,000, fourth class. Okay, so that's again distributed. Now we are left with one, just, just one option. And that one option is 5,800, it's in the third class. 28,000, third class. 32,000, third class. So given that we understand this, it would make more sense. So this is how the table would look like. And please correlate back. If you missed out anything, rewind it, re-listen to it, and do get a clarity of this. So put together, these are all the questions what we wanted to give away to you to understand what is this technique is all about and how it should be solved. If in case you had any confusions, please rewind the entire video and watch it right from the beginning to make sure that you have the complete confidence on getting this right. Right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.
Thank you.